I'm with a very interesting person. His ancestor was the best friend of Muhammad, and he was the first caliph of the entire Muslim world. Is that right, Nasser Siddiqui? That is absolutely right. Sir. That, that's quite a genealogy that you have. <laughs> yes, that's why the name Siddiq is synonymous with Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first caliph of the uh, Muslim nation. So, out of curiosity, would most Muslims recognize your last name? Absolutely, absolutely. If I was to go to the Middle East, they would immediately recognize Nasser Siddiq. He's family from the Siddiqs. And uh, speaking of family, he came from a very prosperous family, but uh, he didn't do so bad himself. By 35, he was a millionaire. He had all the neatest cars and homes and everything Hollywood says they'll make you happy. But you know what? He developed a deadly disease. Tell me about that, Nasser. Um, I got very sick, and it started off with blisters on the side of my neck. And by the morning, it had grown to blisters half an inch in, half inch in size on the side of my This head. isn't supposed to happen to you. Everything. Mm, no. But of course, you were working about 18 hours 18 a day. Hours a and day. You, so your immune system was ripped. Yes. Down, 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 mine is zero. They, they rushed me to hospital. I had passed out twice that night. They rushed me to hospital, uh, Toronto General Hospital in Toronto, Canada, in the emergency section. They diagnosed it as the worst case of shingles ever recorded in the history. I was in so But wait a pain. second, I had shingles and I was in pain, but that wasn't, I, I couldn't die from it. <laughs> well, this one was from the top of my head all the way down here, all the way down the side of my face, this ear, this neck, this shoulder. Uh, they admitted me to hospital. The next morning, this ear was touching this shoulder. It was like a balloon. I looked like a leper, deformed on this side. And my immune system was not fighting back. Now, do you, you have a picture of that. Would yes, you show yes, us that? Yes, absolutely. This is what I look like uh, in that hospital room. Mm. Blisters one inch in size, chicken pox, temperature 107.6, and brain damage. In this condition, with hypothermia, they left me to die. Well, the doctors actually came into the hospital, yes. standing over your bed. Yes. They think you're out of it, you're sleeping. Yes. What did you hear them say? They examined me and they said that his immune system has shut down. This is spreading across his body. Uh, we can't do anything about the hypothermia because the brain had cooked itself and they said I would probably be dead by the morning. In fact, Anita, they took her out of the room afterwards and explained to her that A, if I lived, this, this, is, I would this, be this blind. is someone that worked with you. Yes, I, my eye would be blind, my ear deaf, th there's brain damage, this side of the face would be paralyzed, and if I lived, I would be a vegetable, but probably I would be dead by the morning. Okay, you hear this horrible report. Yes. Uh, you're a Muslim. Yes. Uh, did you prepare? What, what does a Muslim think when he gets a death sentence? Like um, the, Allah is not a healer. Uh, Mohammed is not a healer. So we don't turn to Allah to heal us. We assume that we're going to die. But I was afraid of death, Sid. I was petrified of Why? death. Why? I didn't know what was on the other side. But right. I was afraid of it. And the very people that I had my faith in, my trust in, were those doctors. And they had just given up. What do you do when the people you got your trust in have given up on you and left you to die? In, in, in fear, I cried out. I said, God, if you're real, don't let me die. That's what I cried out. Mohammed didn't come, Allah didn't come, but that night, that night, in that room, there appeared a figure at the end of the bed. And this person... Well, wait, wait a second. Had you ever seen something supernatural like this before in your no, entire life? Never. This is the, your first time... Yes. Okay. Now, now there's this figure. Yes. And uh, are you scared? Are you? What's going on? No, with it? no, this? not at all. I okay. wasn't scared at all. I, in the middle of the night, I see this figure at the end of the bed, and it was the outline of a person with light radiating from them. Hmm. I couldn't tell you the way the face looked, but all I could see was this outline of a person with light. Now, I knew it was Jesus. 
these people come to me and they say, but you're a Muslim. Muslims don't know Jesus. Oh, yes, they do. If you read the Quran, Jesus is mentioned many times as a good man, as a healer, as a prophet. Even his birth is mentioned and that he healed people. But, but the main thing I understand about Islam, uh, they say God has no son. That's I mean, exactly look at the mosque right. when they, they have it right on top in, in Jerusalem. <laughs> That's right. He has no son. Well, this person that appeared said two things. I am the God of the Christians, and I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wait a second. As a Muslim, isn't it uh, Abraham, Ishmael, Ishmael and Jacob? Right. That's right. <laughs> Ishmael was supposed to be the firstborn, right. not Isaac, but that's not what this person said. Abraham, Isaac. So to me, it meant a whole lot. But even more astounding was that the next morning, the same doctors walked in and they said, we don't understand what's happened. It is a miracle. It has gone into remission. Instead of spreading, they are starting to decrease. Now, when they said that to you, what did you think? I, I, I said, look, I don't know what to tell you, but there was a, did you a tell person. Them? You I told, told them. them. Oh, they're going to put you in a mental ward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told them, there was Jesus here and he healed me. And a said, Muslim no, no. saying that, they're going to put him away. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't believe me. And that became a test case in the city of Toronto. Why is this man alive? In fact, they said it's gone into remission so much, you can go home now. And I said, no, I don't want to go home. That was my security. That little room was my security. You wanted that man to come back? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> they released me the next day. Now, the problem was that even though it had gone into remission, th my head still looked deformed right and so when I would walk down the street people would cross over the other side Not that. I had that burning question is Jesus really the Son of God and um, I got home that day the day I, I was released from the hospital the next morning I wake up at six o'clock I don't know why I woke up at six turned on the television there were two men just like here talking about that very question and on the screen it says is Jesus the Son of God my goodness Coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so that was the very question that was in my heart and they're talking back and forth and they were talking about how God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins because of his love for us. This now, as a Muslim, what, is the, what did this mean to you? It's so strange. Well, well, as a Muslim, I was taught all my life that uh, to know that you're going to heaven, your good works have to exceed your bad works. And it's only through works. The only exception of that in Islam is called jihad. Jihad is when you die for your cause. You die for your God. And here I'm hearing these two men talk about not dying dying for your God, but your God dying for you. I'd never experienced that kind of love in my life. And I said, could this be true? Could it be true that God, the Father, sent Jesus, the Son, to pay the price for my sins, for everything that I've done wrong? This was, this was all new to me, but it was exciting. And these men were talking back and forth that yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and yes, it is documented that he walked the earth, and it is documented that he healed, and it is documented that he died on the cross and paid the price for the sins of all men. So what happened? with this horrific disease that you had. Well, that day when that program finished, I got on my knees, they led me in a prayer. I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I found a photograph of the way I used to look and I started praying to this Jesus. Can you make me look like this again? I had looked 75 years old. I had my whole face is aged. Five days later, I woke up at five o'clock in the morning the doctor said, don't scratch the blisters, they're contagious. But I saw some on my pillow, so I must have scratched them in the middle of the night. I got out of bed, stood under the shower, said for an hour and a half, every single blister from the top of my head, my face, my ear, my neck, my shoulder, fell. And the skin was red like raw meat. And the doctor said I would have white blotches. But as you can see, no. there's no blotches. So is there any doubt in your mind that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that Jesus is his son. Any doubt? No doubt. I, 